Hello everyone and welcome to this small tutorial series on how to create a slate roof material using Substance Designer. Please note that this tutorial is part of a much larger 25 plus hour course on how to create a medieval environment. This means that this tutorial you are about to see will be nice and casual. We will be taking our time and small mistakes will be left in along with their solutions. And of course you might see me reference the bigger course here and there. Anyway, I hope that you will enjoy this small tutorial series and I also hope to see you in the full course when it releases. Okay, so we left off with our bricks and now what we're going to do is we are going to work on our roof over here. And I felt like creating this type of roof. Now we're not going to create like the top pieces over here, we will just go ahead and do that using geometry in a slightly different way. But we are going to just create like these little slates. And they are quite easy. As you can see it's just like a height map, once you have the pattern down you can see some edge damages on here which we can do using a slow blur grayscale. And for the rest we just want to go ahead and work a little bit more using our color. So let's just dive right in. Also the quality of this does not have to be absolutely amazing because it will be quite high up. So in order to save time in this course um, the quality is just going to be like medium. Like we're not going to go super high quality or anything like that. So metallic roughness, let's do slate roof, uh, let's go ahead and press ok, uh, there we go, ok, cool, so that is here, uh, we do not need the metallic, we can just go ahead and delete all of those temp inputs over here, and now what we can do is we can get started with our height map. So for height map, we first of all need to go ahead and we need to actually have the pattern, and the pattern pretty much just looks like yeah, it's like a semicircle, and then it just goes up. And then what we will do is we will of course have some overlaying going on. So we do need like a gradient on it. So seeing that, it pretty much looks like two shapes. Here we go, two shapes. Uh, shape number one is going to be a simple disc. Set it a bit smaller to like a uh, zero point. Let's see. Actually, they need to be quite close together. So the closer you are. To these edges the closer together they will be so it's this one and then we are going to blend this using another shape and this shape is going to be uh, let's duplicate 0 0.98 let's go over here 0 0.98 to make it the exact same fall off and you want to basically set this to art and then what you can do with your shape is there's a few things that we can do we can all set the y amount over here a little bit lower and then push it up um, or you can just use a transform I'm just gonna set the Y amount lower use a transform and set my tiling mode of my transform in the absolute to no tiling so then now all I need to do is just move this up until this point there we go and now we have this shape over here Maybe I want to make this a tiny bit smaller, 0 0.98, 0 0.97. No, that's too small, 0 0.975. Uh, 977. Okay, 0 0.98, I guess. Fair enough, I just want to make extra sure. So now that we have this, now what we would need is we would need a gradient, because else we cannot fit them under the other pieces. Uh, so for the gradient, we are just going to blend this using a, and we have actual gradients here. Let's do gradient linear 0, 01. And we want to set the rotation to 180. So we want to go from the tip to be white and then start to go dark. And then just multiply it. There you go, something like that. Okay, so now we have a base shape. Now comes the tricky part. At least I always find this tricky because it has to do with like the sorting. So because we need to sort them in very specific ways. We want to go ahead and probably grab a tile, let's do a tile sampler for this, because it has the most options, and that way I don't accidentally make a mistake and need to like switch out the options again later on. So we plug this into our pattern, and we set our pattern from square to pattern input. Okay, so yeah, this is what we have right now, that's totally fine. I'm not too worried about that. Now... The scaling is pretty close. So what we are going to do is we are going to set the scale over here. And we want to set this one up. 
And now the offset will most likely not work actually. So we can give it a try, but most likely what we'll need to do is we will need to create like a mask. So if you go over here to position and set this offset to 0 0.5 over here. Now what will most likely happen is if we scale this up, here see, um, it will get rid of all of these edges. And that's not something you want. So you want to kind of like have these really close together. But like uh, 0 0.985 maybe. No, 0 0.99. It needs to be quite close together and then 0 0.95. Like I want to have them almost touching. Oh, so now one does work. Okay, so that's strange because I thought it did not work. 1.1. Oh yeah, see? So there seems to be like a little clamp. 1.05, 1.01, I think 1.01, yeah, Let, let's just keep it at 1, just in case. So there we go. So okay, we, we have these lines over here. That's totally fine. Now normally there are also like uh, masks over here, and there is, so... We have this one, seed. So maybe it's a tight generator. There is like a checker mask also in here. The vertical mask and the horizontal mask. What I was hoping is that we can actually use those, but I'm not completely sure. So let me also just try placing that in here. Well, I am sure, but I'm not sure the best way to do this. Well, that's also not true, but you get what I mean. Like I want to try it out. <laughs> let me say it like that. So offset zero, 0 0.5. And what I was talking about is that I want to make sure that if I mask a horizontal... Ah, okay. So if I do a horizontal mask, that seems to be fine. So we have like this fall-off. However, this fall-off would not be enough. As far as I can remember. So we would need to probably scale them up a little bit. But that's something that we can go ahead and give a try right now. So if we just go ahead and use this version over here. So what I'm talking about is that I always mess up the blending. The beginning of the blending is quite easy. So you basically have this tile generator. And then what you want to do is you want to add a transform. And it's important that we have masked out the horizontal version. So you just want to end up with this. Now with your transform, what you're going to do is you are going to blend the original with your transform. And we need to do this a few times in a row. And then in your transform to the you want to go ahead and set the offset first. Uh, you can see this better by setting your blending mode to art. And then you can just go to your transform. And it is often a default value like 0 0.05. And then you also want to set your Y offset down. And your Y offset would also probably be like 0 0.05. Something like that. To get like a even spacing. Now basically if you then add a histogram scan. We need to do some smart masking. So we have a histogram scan and we can push the position up. Then we need to have another histogram scan over here for like the top version. Actually, I will do this slow. Uh, for me, for some reason, I am, have always have difficulty with this, with uh, finding out the correct blending. Now you then want to blend your first histogram scan. And then what you want to do is, as you can see here, you need to cut out uh, part of it. So you need to cut out from the second version Actually here, if we do the second version, you need to cut out the first version. And often with the blending mode, if you do subtract, you can cut this out. And then if you plug this into your Arbesti, you can see that now we have a cutout. And we basically need to repeat this function. The only thing is that later on we have like one that is overlapping on both sides. And that one is always a pain. So I, I normally do this with square ones. So of course, uh, the round ones, they might later on cause more problems, but we'll see. Um, because I'm normally used to doing this with square versions, but it should all be the same basic concept. So we are going to go ahead and then temporarily set this one to art again. Now let's go ahead and move this probably down to like minus 0 0.1 and then set this one back to zero. See, so then we have another overlay and then we need another histogram scan over here. And this time we need to cut out. this version over here so we need to blend have the uh, histogram scan from the top and cut it out with the bottom version and set this one to subtract 
Okay, so far so good. Then we have the next one. Let's set this to art. And now comes the fun part. And I that's sarcasm. So this one we are going to set back to zero. And then set this lower. Oh no, wait. Um, 0 0.15. We need to set this one back to 0 0.5 actually. There we go. Okay, so we have this one now. And uh, actually, I don't know why I keep these at art. You want to set these back to copy once you're done. So now with this one, we need to cut out. See, <laughs> I, I, I assume you can understand why I'm talking slowly. So we have this version. We need to cut out the top version, which is this one. So we blend. This time we pick this blend over here. And we subtract that. And then we also need to cut out this version from our original version. Oh god. Um, okay, so let's see. So we cut out the top. And then we need to find... That's not the one, is it? Is uh, This is the one. Yes, so this one, I need to now go in and add a blend, I believe after, but if I add a blend after, I will change these. So I think I need to just add a blend over here. And then I want to grab this version over here and cut this version out. Subtract. Then we place this. Then we place this. And then we place this. Okay, we got it. So that that's what I mean. So that one was is always a bit tricky for me, and for some reason I just get confused. Um, so basically, we have over here two histogram scans, and we just simply blend them using a subtract. Um, over here we have just like some offsets going on. And then for this one, what we are doing is we are quickly grabbing the very final histogram scan and subtracting that from our actual original gradient. And then we simply start blending these on top. And then over here, we just do the same technique where we just have a histogram scan. We cut out the top part. And there we go. Now, we still have some of these hard edges over here. That's something that we are going to work on uh, probably right now. So the way that we can get rid of these uh, hard lines is to just basically go ahead and blur everything a bit. Now, we definitely do not want to blur this version because this is the version that goes into the histogram scans. We want to blur them after. So, for example, this one, just before they go into the blend, I can go in here and add a blur high quality grayscale and set the intensity all the way down, go all the way down here, and then we can have like a look. So, if I now set my intensity up, ah, here we go, you can see. That that just like masks out. And we want to do the bare minimum. So 0. Point, yeah, let's do a nice 0. 0.1 value. I then need to copy this over. Plug it also in here. Copy this over again. Plug it also in here. Copy this over again. And plug it in here. And if you want to organize things, you can always just press D to basically dock these pieces over here. And then I can see that one of them don't know which one. Ah, this one over here. This one is not yet perfect. So there we go. Let's push it up a little bit more. 0 0.2 maybe. 2.5. Yeah, like 0 0.25 is fine. So now we have like these nice soft slates over here. And that's pretty much it. So we got this one. We can go ahead and we can right click call these slates and then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start by adding some edge damage over here and also just like some overall damage so let's throw in a couple things let's throw in a multi-directional warp uh, where are you multi-directional warp grayscale um, if you want you can already plug this into the input we are going to drop in a slow blur grayscale 
And I can see that we also have like some of these like slate cracks sitting on here. But those we will do in a slightly different way. So we are not going to worry about that just yet. So let's stick with these two and then we are going to add some micro noise. Now, if we go ahead and grab a cloud stew, we might be able to actually use the cloud stew for both of these. So if I plug them in here, the multi-directional warp ray scale, you know, just go ahead and set this probably. Well, the tricky thing is that minimum is not as easy in here as it normally is, because of course we are, um, we have a gradient. So the minimum will still show up in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by just adding some small details over here. Then what I want to do is I want to do another multi-directional warp grayscale probably. And this time I want to just use some Perlin noise. And this is like a very large Perlin noise just to add like some general movement. Over here, so we can do this. Here, see? Just adds like a, that little bit of extra movement here and there. And I kind of like that, just having that extra variation. Then we have our slow blur grayscale. And this is where it becomes a bit tricky where we need to like mask the edges because right now the slow blur is literally just going everywhere and that's not something we would want so what we want to do is we want to set the edges roughly how we want them and then what we can do is we can go ahead and we can do a mask and we needed this mask anyway because we don't want to have all of the edges damaged uh, original version and then the edge damage version in the top of a blend and then for our mask, we can do, uh, maybe we can just do like a simple edge detect. Let's uh, have a look. Edge roundness down. Ooh, it, wow, it really does not like that. Maybe because it, we go to an L8 again, for some reason, which I don't want to. So let's set this quickly to L16 before we make the same mistake as using our brick wall. And then over here, again, like L16. Okay, so we still needed to do that anyway. Um, if an edge detect is not working, then we can try just like a simple histogram scan. There we go, which will give us some of these edges. But I can already see some problems arising. And I hope that it is not like the same bug as that we had before. Because I did just update Substance, so maybe there's just like a little problem going on inside of substance that is causing these errors. Uh, this is tricky. This one is tricky because we cannot just cut those out also. Uh, since, yeah, we don't have gradient. Normally the edge detect would actually work. Are you really not working this time? Because that would be a real shame. Okay, so this one is not working, but I have a feeling this is again like the same bug as that we had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all save my scene. Textures. Slate. Roof. Over here. And let's save that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restart Substance. Just to make sure that it is not that problem. Because uh, we once again have like the same issue as that we had before. Okay. Yeah. See. So it's a bug. Um, I will go ahead and I will report this to Adobe uh, because this is definitely, because now it is working totally fine. All I did was I just restarted Adobe. So we have this stuff over here. We can invert it. Sure, it's not perfect, but the nice thing is that we need to blur this anyway. So what we can do is we can add like a blur high quality grayscale. And I hope that it will not like break again later on uh, like this. And then you can go ahead and add another histogram scan just to kind of push it back down. And then we basically just want to have this over here. So now you can see that because we blurred it, it will only go around the edges. And then in order to basically add some variation, we want to blend this using a Perlin noise. Over here. Uh, set this to multiply. And make this go in, not too big. And then we do need to add like another histogram scan on top of this. Just to basically push the details a bit stronger like you can see here. And now you have a bit more control over where you want to have these pieces. And I can make them bigger or smaller like this. There we go. That's quite annoying of a bug that we have that. But uh, I guess that's a risk when 
I always update my software before I start a new course. And this is just to make sure that you guys are on the late, same version as me. But um, yeah, it's a bummer. Anyway, we now know workaround. <laughs> a really strange one, but just start it up on and off again, or turn it on and off again. So I want to add a little bit more contrast, I think. Yeah, I feel like it needs like a little bit more contrast in order to properly actually show the full strength. Let's say something like this for now. So we can go ahead and add another frame and call these ones um, damages. And now at this point, let's just go ahead and just have a, to finish off this chapter, have a look. Uh, RTAO, Ray Trace and Mute Occlusion. Over here. Ooh, that looks nice. Uh, maximum distance is a bit much, but that's something that you can just like tone down and then the height scale you can tone down, see? But that is actually a really nice looking AO. It's really clean. So I have a feeling this is going to be like a really nice and clean texture. And normal, although I do think that I need to blur my slow blur grayscale a bit, but we'll see. Uh, set a normal like nice and strong to around 3 for now. Yeah, here see. I want to just add like a tiny bit of like a blur high quality grayscale. You often need to do this. If your details are too strong. Here to these pieces. And like very low, 0 0.05 or something like that. Uh, 0 0.07. No, that's 0 0.06. There you go, see? So just like a tiny blur, something like that. And we have these pieces. The normal map colors look a bit interesting, but that should be fine. So let's go ahead and save this. Slate roof. Export outputs as bitmap. Create a folder called final in your textures folder. Select that, turn on automatic export, and then we can have a look. Okay, here we are. I'm going to probably just duplicate my brick wall. Slate roof. Uh, let's get rid of my base color, my roughness, because I don't have one yet. And then what we can do is we can just go ahead and import our slate roof textures. So we will have our, um, if we scroll down, Ambient occlusion, normal, height, set my height quite low, and then plug this in here. Okay, okay. Set my color a little bit down. So, let's move my AO up a little bit. But that is looking pretty good. Like, I don't know what you would expect, it's just like... Uh, some interesting shapes, but yeah, that's looking quite nice. It also looks a bit like scales like you can and I like the edge damages that are happening I actually want to have a few more, but it is funny because it pretty much looks like um, Yeah, I'm going to make a bit sharp um, how you, a reptile uh, Skin stuff like that. So all I'm going to do to finish this off is I have my Non-uniform blur grayscale and I'm just going to set the intensity a bit lower maybe like one to make them a little bit sharper. And then over here what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and maybe. Set my histogram scan a little bit less. Like that. See now they are a bit sharper. Okay awesome so that is a really good start already. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save my scene and in the next chapter. We will um, add like a little bit more details like some surface noise and some surface damages. And once that is done, we will go ahead and probably already start with the base color. Awesome. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and continue with this in our next chapter.